Hello there and welcome to Gotham Talk. Uh, this is my season one wrap up video. I'm going to give you my top five episodes of season one uh, and just highlight what I thought the standout moments were and also give you my hopes for season two, which I have yet to see. Uh, I'd seen, seen season one before starting these series reviews, but haven't seen anything from season two. Or beyond. So yeah, uh, let's get into my top five episodes. Uh, now, there's a couple of honourable mentions first. One is The Scarecrow, which I thought was a really good episode. Only just missed out on making this list. And also Under the Knife, which was just towards the end of the season. thought it was a really good episode. Uh, I think I gave it a four and a half out of five. But it just lost out. Uh, so yeah, with that in mind, Let's get into my top five. Number five is an episode called Spirit of the Goat. And the reason I liked this one so much is because it's centered around Harvey Bullock. And Harvey Bullock has been one of my favorite characters of this season, helped greatly by the fact that I really love the actor who plays him. I think he does a bang up job on it. Uh, but yeah, this, this was a really great episode. There wasn't much to criticize in it. I thought the plot, the, uh, the, the reveal of who the villain was and how they were going about things was really well done. And like I say, the more screen time we get with Bullock, the better. Number four is the episode, What the Little Bird Told Him. Uh, this was when Penguin's plans were really starting to come to the fore, come to fruition. The gang war was starting to really emerge. And it, yeah, again, it was just solid stuff. Um, it gave something to do for most of our main characters and it didn't have, for the most part, didn't have silly subplots. Now we did have the return of this electrocutioner villain of the week kind of guy who'd broken out of Arkham the previous episode, who I didn't quite like in that episode. But in this one, he got fleshed out a lot more. He got links and ties to Moroni that made a lot more sense. His revenge plot made a lot more sense. Um, so yeah, good stuff, great all round. Some genuinely good moments of humor as well. Particularly remember the moment in which Penguin wakes up in the ambulance after taking quite a shock and, and just blurts something out which he probably shouldn't when he's kind of lay right next to Moroni. Um, so yeah, that, that was a, a laugh out loud moment, um, but not in a cheap way, not in a kind of cheap, like tacky way, but just genuinely funny and kind of important to the story, important to the character development. And number three, it's the season finale. All happy families are alike. Uh, this. Uh, this was a five star episode for me. Um, I, I do think it suffered a little bit by, by desperately trying to bring everyone together and get everything kind of wrapped up for the first season. Um, you know, as a result of that, it just felt like it's a whole cluster of stuff in there. But it's just had so many great moments, and it, it was nice to see um, Maroney's final moments, I guess. You know, there was quite a shock to see him go like that. But it, it was a really good scene, played out very well. And Fish Mooney had never been better, really. She just, yeah, great costume time for her. Not that that's the thing that makes the best episode, but it was just everything. All the attention to detail on that was just spot on. And, and it was good to see uh, Gordon kicking some ass. And what a cliffhanger, you know? Just, yeah, Alfred and Bruce finding the, well, what I guess will become the Batcave. Um, yeah. Great moment, really wanted me, really really uh, left me wanting more, so. Number two, and I really struggled with the position of this. I didn't know whether to make this my number one, um, but in the end, I put it in number two, and it's Lovecraft. And one of the things that really sells this episode to me is the fact that Alfred and Bruce get to do a lot. I love the relationship between Alfred and Bruce. I love that chemistry. I love what those actors bring to it. So whenever you get an episode that centers primarily around them, it's gonna be a good one for me. Um, and I, I just, I like that Alfred gets to kick some serious ass in this one. You know, some people break into the mansion and he gets to show just how uh, physically capable he is. Um, but yeah, the, the whole episode is like that. It's really strong, quite action packed. Um, you know, you've got these hit men going after Selena, so there's, there's a lot of fisticuffs in it, there's a lot of running around, there's a lot of action beats. Uh, but yeah, just solid stuff. All my favourite characters get kind of brought to the fore. You know, Garden, Bullock, Alfred, Bruce. So, great one for me. Like I say, 
I, I struggle not putting this at number one, but in the end, decisions had to be made. And so my number one choice for my top five episodes of season one is Penguin's Umbrella. Uh, yeah, this this was just great. This was the first time, um, you know, like Spirit of the Goat kind of gave me a taste of what those like single episode, villain of the week type episodes could, could be like. Um, but this was the first episode where the, the main story arc, the gang stuff, everything with Gordon and how that connects and Cobblepot really came to the fore and just was spot on. Absolutely brilliant. Um, you know, there's the raid on the police station, Zask up against Gordon, Gordon like taking it to Falcone. It's just incredible. Really great stuff. This is this is what Gordon, this, this is what um, Gotham is when it's at its best. Uh, so yeah, outstanding. And I would definitely love more episodes like this. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That's my top five episodes of season one. Uh, now my standouts for this season, as I've already said, are primarily Alfred and Bullock. They're, they're the two characters that kind of, anytime they show up, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy watching it. Um, now, Surprises for me, probably Nigma. I think Nigma's the biggest surprise because at the beginning of the season, I was not sold. I d didn't like him all that much. Uh, I didn't, I didn't, weren't sure where they were going with him. Uh, but as the season progressed, and particularly as we get to the end, really like this character now. And a lot of that is to do with Corey Michael Smith. I think he's the one who's particularly sold me on this. So excellent job to him as an actor. Uh, I think my I wouldn't say, I wouldn't call it a disappointment. So please don't get me wrong. I'm I'm not I'm not um, I'm not insulting anyone here. I'm I'm just trying to deal with some realities because like when I hear people talking about the show, the thing that seems to crop up most from from fans and from people who are talking about it is Robin Lord Taylor as Penguin. Um, most fans that I engage with seem to say yes, he's he's the standout. He's the one who they love watching, and. I think he's great in the show, I, I do, but I, to me he's not the best element. Um, again, I, I, that's that's not that's not me like trying to bring him down because I'm glad he's in the show. I think he does an excellent job. Um, but just for me personally, I, I, I think there are times when he over exit. I think he could do with toning that limp down a bit. Um, maybe make himself a little less ridiculous at times. And there's some inconsistencies with his character, like sometimes it comes off as a, a pathetic weakling, and yet other times he comes off as a psycho who's willing to just tackle, you know, go up against someone who, who actually you think he might be uh, a bit shy against. But So, yeah, it just... For me personally, I, I'm much more sold on uh, the stuff with Bruce and Alfred uh, you know I, I love Alfred as a character and, and, and Bullock and as far as progression goes even though it's been minor I don't think he's had as 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 much screen time as Cobblepot Nigma again you know that progression from from going for, to, from someone that I didn't really like at all at the beginning to someone that I'm, I'm really intrigued to see in season two that's yeah that, that's just my taste um, I like Cobblepot I like Robin Lord Taylor but, you know, not quite as much as everyone else seems to. Um, I think I've been a bit hard on uh, Erin Richards with uh, with regards to uh, Barbara Keane. Um, but when I look back on it, uh, you know, particularly watching this season, the, the second time around, my thoughts on her have improved, actually. You know, she, she's had some hard... She's had hard character act, to be honest. She's got she had some difficult stuff to, to do as an actress because... A lot of the time, her character just isn't that likable, you know? She's a bit whiny, she's a bit... Yeah, she does. She just does stuff that makes you kind of want Gordon to, to go with Dr. Com Do Dr. Tompkins. Um, so that's difficult, you know? When, you, when you're when you playing that, when you're playing stuff that you know is kind of unlikable, yeah, that that's pretty hard. So if, if, there's, one, if there's one person I'd say I've been unfair to across the season, it would probably be... Erin Richards. Um, so yeah, yeah. You know, g given her character shift now, who she is as a person now, I'd be intrigued to see where they go with her. Which does kind of bring me to my hopes for season two. Uh, that's one of them, I guess, is that they they do something with her character that is is a bit more rewarding. Um, also, Nigma. I want to see 
his transformation a bit more towards the Riddler because, um, like I say, the tail end of season one has been has been very very good for me with, with regards to his character. Um, I want to see Gordon clean up the police a bit more. I want to see him get a few more allies. Um, I mean, we had Montoya at the beginning of season one, but she, she, she seemed to have disappeared. Like the tail end of season one, her and the, the other guy that was with her, her partner, that, yeah, they just seemed to disappear. And it was like they were coming around at one point, it seemed, but, but now they're, they're just nowhere to be seen. So I hope they come back. You know, I know that Monti Montoya is quite a long-standing character now in the comic books. So it'd be nice if they come back and it'd be nice if Gordon can kind of get a team of cops together. Some trustworthy cops who believe in him, who believe what he stands for. I'd like to see that. As for the villains, yeah, you know, keep on doing what they're doing. Keep having some escalation. I'm not too sure about Jerome. You know, I I, I know he does return because I've, I've seen publicity stills and things like that. Um, some of them have kind of given a few things away, but... I'm still not sure if I'm sold on him as as the Joker, if that is indeed where they're going, or whether it's just a red herring, I don't know. But if it is, I, yeah, like I say, I'm not sure about that. We'll see. If 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 that's where they're going, then I then I hope I hope it improves because his episode what was actually my least favorite episode of season one, uh, and that that wasn't necessarily because of him. Actually, just just to be fair, um, there were other elements in that episode that it just made it kind of a little bit. It, yeah, it just wasn't quite as well fleshed together as others. Um, but yeah, so that that's that that'd be my main concern. I think is Jerome. Um, I want to see progression with Nigma. Really like that. Uh, and yeah, I'd love to see Gordon get a few more allies. Before I go, I will just say I added up all my scores for for the season. So the score for every episode, I added them up and I divided them by 22 because there's 22 episodes and that gave me a average score for the season. And my average score for season one, my overall score for season one is four out of five, which I think is a pretty damn solid score if I'm being perfectly honest. Uh, so yeah, four out of five overall for season one. Let me know your top five and your overall thoughts of this season. Comment below with them and until next time, cracking.